Hey guys, welcome back to Fringe FM. I'm your host, Matt Ward, and let's get started. Today, we're talking about augmented reality. We're diving deep into overlays over overlays over Minority Report and the incredible future where we're headed. But first, this is Fringe FM. Let's play the intro. So if this is your first time, I'm your host, Matt Ward, futurist, angel investor, serial entrepreneur that's focused on trying to build a better future by empowering others to explore the technologies, especially the exponential technologies of our future, the ones that are transforming humanity and life as we know it. Today, we're diving into augmented reality. But every week, I dive into a different technology. So from augmented reality to AI, quantum computing, we've got blockchain coming up soon. These are the technologies that are changing what it will mean to live in the future. They're changing the way that we all live and function, and augmented reality is what we're talking about today. If you like this and find it interesting, 12.30 p.m. EST, Wednesdays and Sundays, we do these live streams. You can hop on, ask any questions. You can see we've got our live viewer chat going. So far, nothing's happening. And then we'll answer them live. We've got question-answer sessions towards the end of the program where if you have something interesting you want to know about augmented reality or any of the other technologies we talk about, I'll discuss. We'll dive into them and we'll do our best to explore. Today, why are we talking about augmented reality? Well, augmented reality is transforming our world. I don't know if you guys have seen these Magic Leap demos. They're incredibly exciting. If you haven't, Google Magic Leap and take a sec to look at those and see these goofy little glasses that are bent down in a cyberpunk-type fashion that are changing the way that we think about the future. So augmented reality, let's, let's jump into the overview. So augmented reality, what is it? It's essentially <laughs> augmenting your reality. Typically, this has been some type of overlay on top of what you're already seeing so that we're able to explore the world in new and unique ways. You'll see some overlays in what we're doing here now. And we've got some right there, like Fringe FM. That's right there on our logo, nice, prime, and showing you. It's kind of augmented in your reality. But how this first came about, so we've all seen Google Glass. These came out, what, 10 years ago and completely flopped. They were those funny little glasses you wore with a tiny little thing over your eye. Not five, 10 years, five years. And over your eye and you could see something projected there. Maybe you could take pictures, you could have information, you could see things. And it was trying to make the experience of walking around and living more exciting. The only problem, the world wasn't totally ready for it. Estimated sales, 831,000, although that seems really high to me. These were really creepy. We didn't know anything about, are they recording us? What's the deal with the privacy? Why is this so weird? Google Glasses completely flopped. But then we came along and smartphones started to become more prevalent. People started to get more into their technology. And suddenly we have, gotta catch them all, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is the first major application of augmented reality. So Pokemon Go, 800 million downloads as of March 2018. That's some pretty impressive stuff right there. 800 million downloads. And we've all seen people that are going around on the bus and they're trying to catch Pikachu and they're trying to catch this and that, etc. We all played Pokemon, or a lot of us played Pokemon going up, especially the, the generation before the millennials, and they were really excited about it. Well, suddenly there's an application that allows us to have some fun and be kids again, yet do it on our phone in the real world. This is what augmented reality is. This is the possibility of combining AI, computer vision, cloud computing, etc. to have things happening. But Pokemon Go is not actually that exciting. It's kind of, yeah, sure, there's experiences, and it's kind of combined with the real world, but we have so much further to go. We're going to dive into those a little bit in the future, but overall, in terms of the overview for augmented reality, it's been pretty hyped so far, but there hasn't been much. We've seen the headsets, we've seen the glasses, etc., but there's not that much that's happening. The headsets are pretty clunky, they're pretty expensive, we're going to be moving towards contact lenses, but the question is just, when do we get there? Now, if you guys haven't checked this out on social media yet, make sure you do that. We've got some information here on the side. You can subscribe. You can follow me at It's Matt Ward. You can subscribe to our YouTube, fringe.fm slash YouTube, if you're just listening to this. I highly recommend it. We have some incredible podcast interviews every Monday and Friday. I'll get some of the world's smartest folks when it comes to AI, quantum computing, space, genetic engineering, human longevity, you name it. If it's something that's ridiculously important and impacting our world, we're having the world-leading experts on there in TED Talk type fashion, except rather than being like a TED Talk, We'll have them on, and we'll have them on for an hour, an hour and a half, so we can talk about who's doing what and where the future is headed. It's incredibly important, incredibly fun, and 
highly, highly recommended. Fringe.fm if you haven't checked this out. Now augmented reality, let's talk about implications. So if I've got augmented reality contact lenses, glasses, etc., you don't know what I'm doing. Am I recording you? Am I taking pictures of you? Am I imagining what you look like naked? I don't know. There's all of these strange little feelings and changes and what it means to be human and what it means to interact with others when suddenly you don't know, are they recording me? Is my privacy dead? Are they paying attention? Are they reading tweets while I'm trying to talk to them? That's just not right for someone to completely ignore you. And yet that's what we do every day. We're in our smartphones, we're ignoring our loved ones, we're not talking at the dinner table, we're on the subway trying to avoid making eye contact. That's what's happening right now. Well, will that be extremized, will that be even more intense suddenly when this is something that's right in your head, this is something that's right in your glasses. You don't even have to think about it. How do we think about that? How do we have safe zones, so to speak? Do we have to think about potentially blocking our blocking our usage, blocking the feeds, etc., so that we can still try to function and be functional human beings? All of these are major, major questions that there's not a lot of people talking about. Again, if you guys have questions, make sure you leave them in the chat. If you go to fringe.fm slash YouTube, you can find our YouTube, join our live streams there, and add any questions that you have right there in the top in the, the live viewer chat. It'll be right in the description. So back to the implications. Well, reduced memory for one. I know I have my phone, and I used to remember people's phone numbers. I don't remember their phone numbers anymore, and I bet you don't either. Well, as we start to have more and more functionality that's built into devices, our brains no longer need to use that space. They'll use it for other things. But what uh, what happens when we start not remembering people? I'm wearing glasses and I see, oh, I, um, I remember. Who was that one? The name pops up over the head. It's incredible. It makes things much easier. So you've got phone numbers, directions, addresses, all of these things that we used to remember and suddenly we rely on our phones for. Well, augmented reality will make that an even bigger deal. What about Google on your on your eyeballs? So suddenly, we can say for we can say for a fact I think that the education system is flawed. It's based off of memorization. Well, rote memorization is not that great of a skill, especially when we have Google right in our glasses, so we can think it, we can say it, etc. Hey Google, who won the presidential election of yada yada? There's no point remembering that as a fact anymore when suddenly we all have ubiquitous information projected and right in front of us right when we need it. Hey Google, how do I get to X, Y, Z? Hey Google, how do I hotwire this car because I'm stealing it? Hey Google, yada, yada, yada. All of these things that used to be skills, when we're able to augment reality, suddenly people are able to learn things. I can figure out how to fix my HVAC, my air conditioning, my refrigerator. I can have all of this overlaid. I can even have a technician who's watching and guiding me through the process all via augmented reality. Now what about boosting productivity and create? What about creativity? So productivity, we talked about that a little bit. If you're able to have overlays, if you're able to have a computer screen that's projected right here and a projected keyboard right there so I don't actually have to have a keyboard and I can be working and functioning and doing, doing what I need to do for my job, well, that's going to boost my creativity, uh, my productivity. I'll be able to do a lot more. But what about in terms of creativity? That's something that, that could take a hit. Although we can also have we can have imaginary friends. If you've seen some of these demos for the Magic Leap product, they the, these headsets they've got they've got little floating elves and things. They've got whales. They've got all sorts of things that follow you around and interact in your environment. Maybe we start adding AI type functionality into these so that suddenly you have a invisible friend that only you can see, but that is actually there. So you're not crazy. Uh, interesting interesting possibilities. We will we will have to see. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, Fringe.fm slash iTunes slash Android slash Stitcher, slash Spotify, slash YouTube. You can find us on all major channels, Fringe FM. My name's Matt Ward, if that helps you for the search. And make sure you check us out, because we try to do this so that you can have a better life, a better future, and know where we're headed. So now I want to talk about light fields. This is something that you see a bit in sci-fi. So some of the implications of augmented reality, while being able to see something and having lenses on works, you can also augment reality by projecting light directly onto the directly onto the iris. So you see something without it actually physically being there in a different way. You don't have a, a screen or a lens type interface. You have projections directly onto the eyes. This is something that we see a lot in sci-fi, and it's something that we're going to start seeing more and more of. There's a lot of companies that are working on these... these uh, um, light projected images into the eyes and this is something where you might have advertising you're walking along and you can't escape it you have to close your eyes because you don't want to see that picture of whatever it is that you're not supposed to eat or buy etc how do we react to that as a society when suddenly we have intrusive advertising that you can't avoid holograms are coming as well i want you guys want me to be there no you don't of course you don't but what if you're going want to go to a ted talk and you can't go to the ted talk well suddenly we can have 
Chris Anderson or whoever of TED projected right into your room. We can have his hologram and he'll be there talking about XYZ or some of the incredible guests we have on French FM. They can be right there with you. I know Peter Diamandis was saying that he's, he's doing speeches now and doing them in holograms. People are doing the same thing with VR, but unless everyone has a VR headset, it doesn't work. But if you have a hologram and you have that worked up pretty well, suddenly everyone can see in the incredible experience of Tony Robbins going nuts and not even realize that Tony Robbins is a hologram. Ooh. Maybe Tony Robbins is a hologram. Maybe he's a maybe he's an AI, and that's how he's able to do so much. Other implications of AR: video games in real life. We've talked about it a little bit with Pokemon Go, but we'll be getting into really much more interesting things as we have we have headsets, as we have more functionality built into what we're using, because there is just so much you can do with overlaying things. I mean, you could even play tic tac toe just looking at something. You could do Sudoku's. You could do much more complicated processes. There's a lot that can go into usage of augmented reality once we are able to overlap things. The last implication, though, can be a little bit scary, and that's we're not able to escape some of these things. They're distractions we can't escape, like Facebook. It just grabs you and you can't escape. Oh, remember to subscribe. You missed, I missed the button timing there. But remember to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't right now on YouTube. If you're enjoying this, hit subscribe so you never miss another episode of Fringe FM. We put these out every Wednesday and Sunday at 12.30 uh, p.m. EST. And if you like this, make sure that you're tuning in. We have question and answer sessions at the end of every live stream. So if you've got any questions about augmented reality or anything that you want to talk about, add those right here to the chat and then I will answer those at the end. But now we're jumping into the pros of augmented reality. There's some pros, there's some cons. Let's talk about what's going to be great. The greatness is going to be productivity gains. We don't need experts. We don't need repairmen. We're able to get help on demand. We can watch YouTube videos and tutorials right while we're doing stuff. This is great for consumers. This is great for industrial applications. And augmented reality and VR as well are picking up, especially in the commercial areas where you have people that are working on things. They can be more productive with less time, with less training, etc. when you're able to show them exactly what they need to do. Here's how you fix a faucet. Here's how you fix a this. Here's how you do that. Augmented reality can be very, very good for that. And this is something that's going to be hugely beneficial. Better user experiences. So when I want to go somewhere, I hate having to go and look at my phone and see the map and it's not quite sure where I am or which direction I'm headed. And I start walking one way and then I have to turn back the other way. And then I realize, shit, my GPS just isn't working. Augmented reality will be very different because we're able to pull images. We're able to pull Google Maps. You know, if you scroll all the way into Google Maps, you're able to see what it actually looks like. Well, now we can do that with augmented reality. So I can be looking around and Google identifies where I am, where I'm looking, and I just see an arrow, or I just see a path on the sidewalk, or I just see whatever it is overlaid only for me. So it's not destroying our environment. It's not polluting the, it's not polluting the, the visual space for everyone else. It's just making my life easier. This is where I go, got it, got it, perfect. I can have a nice little pop-up right here. Oh, remember to buy peanut butter, buy eggs, buy milk, buy bread, buy whatever it is you need to buy. And we can have more rich experiences. So I don't know about you, but I think I'm and I'm a little bit I'm a little bit worried about this, but I'm also I'm also kind of excited about the ability to I for one am a big fan of history. I would love to be able to walk through a museum, walk through some destroyed area and be able to see exactly what's happened here. See, some overlays, I don't want it to destroy the natural historic environment of what I'm seeing, but I, I don't know about you, when I go to the museums, I love reading the little descriptions. I love seeing why this is important, what's happened, and having the context. I'm someone that likes to take in a lot of information. I do it via podcast. If you do, you can subscribe to the podcast. There's information right here in the video. But I love to be able to know what's happening, why it's important, and to get that story. And augmented reality is really, really good for this. There could be some major cons of augmented reality, though. Will we become less human, less connected, when suddenly we're able to look at someone and pretend like we're paying attention and be watching the next episode of Game of Thrones? I don't know how you do it with the volume, maybe. You've got to have something like in those ears. But I even see... Okay, here's a, here's a little rant. I even see people now wearing these stupid Apple AirPods walking around with friends, pretending like they actually want to be with them. But you don't even know if they're listening to something. They have their AirPods in, and they're just can be completely ignoring you. Well, what about completely ignoring you when they have the ear pods in and they're also watching Game of Thrones right there and it's incredibly exciting and you have no idea? That seems a little bit messed up. That seems like it's going to take away a bit of the intimacy of, of people when suddenly you don't know who's talking to who or if they're even paying attention to you. What do you think? If you have questions, anything you want to add, add those questions right here to our live stream and I will answer those when we get them. 
Looks like we haven't got anything yet, so we'll continue with the cons of real world becoming less and less stimulating. This can be this can be a problem. So if you look at overstimulation, hyperstimulation, there's certain areas where this occurs. The two that I think the most about are food and anything related to the adult industry, anything overly extreme. I mean, I guess skydiving as well. Things where you have this adrenaline rush, you have this rush of, oh my God, this Coke is so good, nothing else tastes quite so good. Oh my gosh, this porn is so real, it's so over the top, it's so yada, yada, yada. Anything where you're living in an over the top or overly expanded, overly experiential experience, it can take away from reality. We're living in an era right now of ADD, we have a lot of trouble concentrating. We have a lot of trouble just being. And just being, when you're bored, that's when creativity typically happens. Well, how do we function when suddenly everything has overlays, the entire world is becoming more and more and more extreme and focused on hitting those basal internal animal-like needs that we have? Does the real world just become boring? Do we start to become distracted or detracted from what it means to be alive and human? Hmm. I don't know why I stuck my tongue out there, but it makes you kind of wonder. It makes you think, what happens? I don't know. Let's talk predictions now. Everyone loves predictions, and everyone's afraid of making predictions. So I'm going to jump into some predictions that we're going to have. I think it's obvious that we will have augmented reality contacts. We can turn those on and off, and there will be display enhancements all around us. I think in terms of a time horizon, we're probably looking at 10 years maybe a little bit less in terms of when this happens. I know companies are working on this now. They don't like to broadcast this, but this is something that companies are working on right now, something I'm excited about, something a lot of us are excited about, especially as someone who has to wear contact lenses anyways. If you've got to put them in, you might as well have a little bit of augmentation, right? So what about reduced crime? If you've seen Minority Report, Minority Report's an incredible movie. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend checking it out. You can check out the audiobook as well. If you go to fringe.fm slash audible, you can get a free audiobook trial right there and download Minority Report. Check it out completely free, and you can cancel the trial whenever you want, yet still keep the audiobook. It's a great way to explore the future. There's nothing better, in my opinion, or in the opinion of the guests I've talked to, which I've talked to some of the smartest, most incredible people in the world. Sci-fi is the best way to expand the way that you think about the future, you think about the world, and to have a better understanding of where we're all headed as a society. Sci-fi is very, very good. I would definitely recommend it. Fringe.fm slash audible. You can get any sci-fi book, any business book, anything right there. Now, let's see. What else are we going to have? Oh, yeah. Minority Report. Reduced crime. Well, if you want to cut out crime, you do what China's doing right now. You have monitoring everywhere. You give people social scores. You monitor their faces to see if they're happy, if they're sad. And then you plug that into a bit of AI and say, ooh, it looks like this guy might um, hmm, this guy might do something terrible. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. Fringe.fm slash YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a thing. But in terms of in terms of monitoring crime and uh, reduction due to transparency, I think that's definitely true. When people know that they're on camera, there's much less robbery. That's why people, especially security companies, they'll put up signs that say, warning, you're on camera, because it just makes people act a little bit nicer, a little bit less likely to make an action that they shouldn't do, like robbing something. At the same time, you start to lose some of those individual freedoms, and then uh, that can become pretty complicated. You can follow me on Twitter at It's Matt Ward if you guys like this so far. Next thing, invisible ink, reminders, etc. So I think we're moving towards an area. Before we get completely into, uh, into a biohacking, uh, transhuman type world where we have digital tattoos, which we are moving towards pretty quickly, I think we'll get into much more of invisible, invisible reminders. So sticky notes. I would love sticky notes on the fridge that say, buy this, buy this, buy this. Don't forget, don't forget. You're not supposed to eat this and have dates on when things were made. But that's a lot of paper. That's a lot of waste to make all those sticky notes. Plus, you look like you're nuts. But if you have some type of augmented reality headset and you're able to see these notes and turn them on and off, suddenly you don't lose your mind. People don't walk into your house and think you're crazy pants and everything works out much better. So that would be something I think happens. I mean, at the latest, by the time that we have a bit more, a bit more ubiquitous headsets, contact lenses, etc. So five to ten years type time horizon. Then we're, we're getting into the world where we'll start merging the, the digital and the physical pretty soon, especially as we become more augmented. People already argue that we are cyborgs. I mean, I have a Fitbit watch on. You might have Apple AirPods in. You have all of these different types of enhancements. I have contact lenses. I don't know about you. They help me for seeing because I'm blind otherwise. We have all of these things that we do to enhance ourselves. We start to become more than human. Well, with augmented reality specifically, that more than human will be very much uh, digital compute 
compute base so that we're able to access the cloud, we're able to access more memory, we're able to access Google, we're able to access all of these things just internally or without other people really realizing. We won't need a phone, we won't need a laptop, etc. It's just there. It's information that we have. That's really interesting and that's really exciting for the ability of people to create as long as they're focused on creativity and not getting distracted. If we're all stuck in our eyeballs playing uh, I mean, what's that stupid game, uh, Angry Birds, where I'm just shooting the bird over and shooting him over and shooting him over and knocking things down. We're getting into the world where people are obsessed with the irrelevant things. That can be that can be problematic. It could be good. It can be bad. It can be ugly. We'll have to see where that plays out and what happens. But I think augmented reality, definitely, as it starts to merge and become more of a mixed reality, we're going to start to have some VR experiences combined with AR, so the, the glasses are going to do both. And we're able to add to, rather than detract from the, the current situation, our current experience of the world, I think we're going to have a really, really interesting world. It's something that I'm super excited about and really interested to see how it plays out. If you guys like this so far, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Fringe.fm slash iTunes slash Stitcher slash Android slash Spotify. You can find us on all of the major podcasting apps. Just search Fringe FM. You'll find us. It's all one word. My name is Matt Ward. I am signing off now because it doesn't look like we have. Let's double check. No, we don't have anybody right now asking any questions. We've just recently started these live streams, so that's totally fine. Wednesdays and Sundays at 12.30 p.m. EST, 6.30 p.m. Central European time. If you're interested in technology, you have questions, you want to get those answered live on the show, make sure you hop on. And if you've enjoyed this, I would really appreciate it. All of us at Fringe FM would appreciate it if you'd share this with a friend. We work really hard to try to bring the exponential technologies of the future to you, to explain them, how they're going to impact your life, how they will change what it means to be human, and to try to get us all more focused on being the best versions of ourselves. Right now, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of problems in the world, but we can solve all of these problems through creativity, passion, technology, innovation. Those are the driving forces that make the world a better place. If you believe that as well, please be sure to subscribe to this and share this with a friend. You can find us on all your major podcasts apps or just go to fringe.fm we've got some bonus goodies there for you and now i am your host matt ward signing off until next time cheers